Hi guys, Lauren here from the Audacious Agency. I have an awesome guest with us today, um, the amazing Jerry Morris. And it's quite funny, I've known two Jerry Morrises now in my lifetime. One was an awesome PR guy based in Wellington, and this is a Jerry Morris based in Australia, but he's from England and uh, he's an awesome speaker and, um, and, and speaker bureau uh, manager, just done amazing things in his life. So I can't wait to share with you Jerry's absolute insight and gold. So Jerry has been um, involved in the speaking industry for a long time. Um, he moved to the lovely Sunshine Coast back in 2001 um, and got involved with ICMI, who I'm actually listed with. They're a, a speaker agency um, and got to know um, how Queensland as a, um, a cowboy state really has nothing very well, well organised. It was, I think, a baptism by fire, Jerry, that you got into okay. that and, uh, and really set ICMI up, which is awesome and spent, um, I think it was 12 years working with them as a bureau yeah. and, uh, and getting them more well known, which is cool. And and then um, from there, um, ran your own events and started to realise, you know, what was really involved and, and the incredible effort that people put together for amazing events with sports lunches and inspirational dinners and, and all those sorts of things with, with uh, the favourite speakers that Jerry had got to know. And he came across um, Saxton Speaker Bureau and worked for them for three years. So um, the nicest thing about Jerry is he's got experience as understanding what it's like for the speaker, but more importantly, he knows what it's like for conference organisers, what goes on inside speaker bureaus, um, what they're looking for, how they work. Um, it's like getting someone who's on both sides of the fence, which is really <laughs> cool. Um, and he now has his own awesome platform, which we're going to talk about in a minute, um, called Book Speakers Direct. And it really is flipping the whole speaker bureau industry on its head. So I can't wait to share all of that information that Jerry has. Um, but Jerry, what I'd like to ask you first is, I mean, you've dealt with a lot of speakers over the years. Can yep. you tell us a couple of ideas on what makes a really good speaker and how can you position yourself to be selected to speak? Yeah. All right, well, geez, what a wonderful intro. <laughs> that sounds like I'd like to speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I have seen both sides of the coin, which is terrific, and that's, when I ran the events company for three, four years, that's where I find a new love and respect for PCOs and event planners. They do an amazing job. But yeah, as far as exceptional speakers, it is a great question. Um, I think it's about content and owning the stage. So quite often I'll see, I'll think of speakers just like performers. You know, like they spend a long time becoming the expert in the field and then they want to get up on stage and speak, but just like a performer or a front man, front lady of a band, you've really got to own the stage. You know, it's a case of like, there's a lot of really good speakers out there. You know, like if we want to put scorecards up, it's five or six, or six or seven, but people really need to be aiming for eight, nine, ten. You know, like it's about really delivering. I had a, you know, as you know, about like having a great brand. That great brand has to be on stage and it has to deliver. So for myself, like if I had phoned up a client the day after a conference, and I go, how were they? And they go, they were exceptional. That's what I want to hear. If I hear, oh, they were good, you go, okay, so there's room for improvement. So yeah, it's about really owning the stage, knowing what you're delivering. And because when you're up there for 45 minutes, that's a big ask. Yeah. You know, they're calling people's attention for 45 minutes. Like I joke that comedians have like a 20 minute set, you know, and 20 minutes, and now we're asking a guest speaker to go for 45. Um, um, yeah, so it's about being really on top of your game and building a great reputation. Yeah, brilliant. Well, that's music to my ears as a personal branding specialist because it is all wrapped up, isn't it? Not just your content and what you know and your expertise, but how no. you deliver it and how you really own it. So that's awesome. Absolutely. So, Jerry, before someone puts themselves out there, um, either obviously listing with the Bureau or looking at the likes of um, Book Speakers Direct, what do they have to have ready? Because I find a lot of people like, I want to be a speaker, but they just don't have everything that they need. And they're sort yeah. of putting the cart before the horse. So what do they need to have ready before they go and talk to someone like a speaker bureau? Yeah, well, again, like it's funny, we're talking about branding. Like, um, but it's, there's just so much involved. There's so many cogs. And for a, a corporate client to put you in front of their audience, pay a couple of thousand dollars, you know, it's a whole package. You know, like this isn't a go at a speaker that I seen the other day, but there was mixed messages on their website 
you know, it really has to reflect them. But, oh, but people's attention span these days, you know, like uh, I'm hearing like for LinkedIn, it should be a one minute video. Uh, I actually heard a person go, I can't go two minutes. I go, really? And he said like, no matter how good the video is, I can't do two minutes. Wow. So you have to hit people between the eyes, like straight away. So that branding website, obviously then, there's a show reel. Obviously, a lot of speakers have a, a good show reel, but I'm also a great believer that it's okay just to talk to the camera and tell people what you deliver on. Uh, it's like you know yourself better than anybody else, so you've got to get that across to people so that people are ready to fall in love with you straight away and go, I want to know more about this person. So as far as going to the bureaus, like. Bureaus would expect a certain amount to be done already. So um, it's almost like click and paste and yep, we put you on there. So that anything that a client was to see on the bureau or even our website, and then go back to the speaker's website, it's gotta reflect that person. And it's gotta have, almost like going back to being on stage, it's gotta bang, 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 tick all the boxes so that people go, right, this person looks, and sounds like the sort of person we want to put in front of our audience. Brilliant. So it is about packaging, isn't it? It's the whole totally. thing. The photographs, speaker show, reel, a download. But I like what you're saying, Jerry, in that consistency. Yeah. That they're getting the same person, the same personality, the same message all the way through. So awesome. Absolutely. And um, you mentioned there, um, which is, leads me into another good question, because a lot of people, and I mean, a lot of people are watching this get with the weekly rocket that we send out. And it's full of, like six to 10 opportunities to be a guest speaker or a podcast guest or a guest blogger. So it's about packaging your brand and getting it out there. And the reason we do that, a lot of those events that we share in the weekly rocket are unpaid. And the reason is because you've got to get that little bit of experience. You've got to get a testimonial, um, at least a couple of logos on your um, side of the media you've been in, or if you've spoken for an, for an organization so that there's some evidence, some proof, I guess, that yeah. you actually can, can perform, you can do what you're saying you can, you can do. So how much do you think somebody needs to get that evidence and proof um, compared to just going, oh, look, I just want to be a speaker. I'm a best-selling author and now I should be a speaker. What yeah. more evidence do you think they need? What more evidence? A great question, Lauren, great question. Um, yeah, you gotta do the yards. You know, it's almost like, again, if I think of a performer, You've got to do X amount that, you know, it's just experience, right? So in all honesty, yeah, <laughs> good question. It's like, yeah, have to have a minimal amount, right? Um, oh, uh, like again, we're talking show reels, we're doing um, jobs, you know, you, you end up doing X amount of jobs for free, but then there's got to come a time when you go like, no, I've done enough. You know, it could be 20 jobs, it could be 50, whatever it feels like, I'm ready to go to that next level and then be completely confident in yourself that, yeah, I'm there. You know, and, and that confidence comes across with everything else you do. Brilliant. I love it. And it's funny, isn't it? Because um, I guess when people are starting out on their journey as a speaker, it is that confidence thing. It's uh, confidence, A, to own the stage and to, yes. to put yourself out there. But you have to say, I'm actually worth paying for my time and my expertise. Your yeah. audience is going to get so much value out of what I deliver that it's worth paying me. Um, now, what are speakers sort of looking for? What's the trend you're seeing going forwards with speaking with, A, what speakers are expecting, like travel expenses, accommodation, how much money they're expecting to be paid and so on, and how long they're expected to speak for. I know you mentioned 45 minutes, but also... Is there a changing expectation from the bureaus and what they're expecting and from the people booking the speakers, the conference managers and so on, and, and the expectation of what speakers can do for them these days? All right. Again, great questions. Lots of lots in there to answer. Um, let's see. Like, as far as like speaker travel, what they're looking for like is, is a set fee. Right? So it's a set fee across the board. So if you're a four or $5,000 speaker, like $5,000, the, the bureaus want to put you at $5,000. They don't want to be undercut by anybody because that's just not good for anyone. You know, you have to stick to your fee unless it's a charity or unless they put a really good case forward to you. But you never want to be seen as undercutting anybody because it's just horrible for the industry. Mm, you know, mm. you stick at the fee, 
Yeah, definitely travel is included. Um, so a client should expect to pay for possibly um, premium economy or flexible because speakers flights, speakers diaries fill and change all the time. So uh, quite often they will be transfers to and from the airport. They can be uh, accommod like accommodation or yeah. the night before or you know, at the end of a show and definitely flights. So we always look at it as, as the fee plus GST plus travel plus accommodation and transfers. Awesome. And what are you seeing from the people who are running conferences and events and what they're expecting of speakers these days? Yeah, it's to deliver. I know big time like is um, it's the wow factor that I'll go back to. Mm. I know like if they if a client like there's a massive trust issue here, like a trust. It's like, you know, the client has seen what they've liked, they've spoken to you on the phone, they've done briefings. Right? Yeah. And then they want you to get on stage and deliver exactly what you were going to say. Right? Yeah. That is paramount here. Now, unfortunately, like, and I'm not going to have a go at a certain <laughs> celebrity speaker. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, I knew of a great client who really went out of the way to get said speaker, had a lot of money, mm. um, and had a briefing call. And then when the day came, just went off. You know, just didn't stay the brief and it left a very sour taste with everyone. Mm -hmm. So you have to deliver what you said you were going to. Mm -hmm. uh, that ticks the box for a client, conference organizer, and there's a good chance of getting repeat work out of it. Yeah, brilliant. Because that's really all they want, isn't it? Is for the audience to leave going, wow, that was awesome. I've got loads of notes. I've got yeah. loads of insight. I loved the speaker. It was great fun. Or man, they motivated me, or whatever it is. You've, you've, yeah. And you're right, Jerry. it's about not just delivering content, but actually engaging with the audience and, and giving them what they need. So I like that idea of a briefing call, though. Is that something that you would suggest if you're going for an opportunity and you're putting yourself forward as a speaker, that you might include in, in, your, in your pitch, look, I'm available for, for a briefing call if you want to catch up with me beforehand? Is that something you might, as a speaker, go and go, hey, look, we, we're ha I'm happy to chat with you first? Yeah. Look, there's a couple of ones on this. It's again, that is just so so important. Mm -hmm. And if you can do the face to face, great. Or you can do a Zoom call. You know, all good as long as you're making that connection. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to plug the business yet because I know we're going to get to that later. <laughs> but crazy enough, like with some of the bureaus, is that um, they don't want you to speak to the client too soon. You know, it's more like two weeks, or they'll even say that the speaker will speak to you two weeks before the event. Uh, and then there's no, they might book you months, at, uh, but then there's no communication. Mm -hmm. if you're able to start that relationship from the beginning. You know, like if, let's have a briefing call now, and then let's have another one. Let's touch base. So if you can have a couple of phone calls, emails between client and yourself, you build a, a rapport, you know, and by the time you get to the conference, you're like an old friend. Yeah. Oh, you know, like um, <laughs> I've got a lovely lady who uh, I think the world of, and she is brilliant at creating that relationship along the way. You know, she even does <laughs> she does this thing like chariots of fire, but in slow motion, and they like, come <laughs> running together and hug each other. Oh, it's so good to see you. <laughs> uh, and then so when that goes on stage, the person feel so much more confident that this is going to go well yeah. because again like <laughs> i've run events myself and think like okay this is going to be great and then somebody be up there and just thinking for the love of god somebody get the coat hanger <laughs> 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 pull the that's, a, that's a good point jerry i know i've run a number of events myself and been involved in, in speaking for years there's so many things that can go wrong at events the yeah. last thing you want is for your speaker to let you down. Oh, when the speaker okay. gets up there, you just want to go, bang, they've hit it. Awesome. I can now relax and think about yeah. all the other stuff that's not working quite right at the conference or the things I've got to do. No, totally. you're, you're right. And then the same thing goes for a great MC. Yeah. Now, a great MC will make an event. And then even going back a little step, it's hilarious when like the CEO will, will do the talking. Yeah. No, you know. <laughs> you know like exactly. <laughs> Yeah, motivators. We, yeah, let's get our pitchforks out. But, uh, you know, and a great MC will keep it all rolling as well. You yeah. know, um, and a good MC will 
like even hit on the points that the speaker had just presented, even just a couple of keynote points. You know, like I've seen MCs like again have to do it in house, and and just kill it. You know, like somebody's got up on stage that forty five minutes again. You know, there's almost a stand innovation. Yeah. And a bad MC can come up and go boof and go. Yeah. Wow, it just sucked the energy out of the out room. Out of the room. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. happened? Yeah. Um, but um, and and I love. Like say with really engaging speakers, is that, yeah. and I have been very fortunate to see it quite a few. Yeah, people. awesome. Uh, so um, I remember one time at a big conference, and it was, you know, there was a lady with knitting needles. You know, she she had that attitude of, oh, the last thing I needed to be is motivated today. <laughs> 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 but um, so, and then the speaker started, and uh, and she's very engaged, and very funny, and she's definitely that ten out of ten, eleven out of ten. And I watched the lady putting her knitting needles down and getting into it. You know, same conference, because it was for education, same conference. I watched the man at the back of the room and he didn't, his face just no emotion. You know, and I thought, wow, like made a stone or something here. But at the end of the presentation, he has bolted up to see her. I almost felt like, you know, the movie The Bodyguard, where I wanted to attack the speaker. <laughs> Came up, give her a, a, a big handshake and a hug. And as it turned out, within a few days, I was sent an email and we worked out it was from him. And, he's, and he taught kids with special needs. And in his email, I said, I had lost the will to teach the kids and I got my mojo back that day. Wow. Uh, wow. Mind wonderful moments. But that's the things that I do love that speakers can bring. You know, like even if you get up there and you deliver the best you can, you just don't know who you're hitting in the audience and what they're taking away from it. Mm. Like I'd love to believe that the speakers have a gift and, and you're giving it from the stage and it's what people take from it. Yeah, you know, that's absolutely. the magic and what guest speakers do. And if they go back to the business and, you know, like lift their uh, work rate by 10%, or just get involved more with a team, like job done. You know? So yeah, awesome. I, I love the magic of speakers. And as I said, it's the content, the delivery, and then what happens afterwards. What a fact that you've left on those people. Nice, it's a very good point, Jerry. And it's something that I think if, if you're listening to this and your whole plan is, I wanna be a speaker, cause I wanna be on stage and I wanna be paid to do it and so on. You need to think a bit more than that. You need to think about your impact on the audience and what you're going to be doing to affect people's lives. Because no pressure, guys, but when you are a speaker and you are on that stage, it's going to happen. And yeah. uh, and you need to be prepared. As Jerry says, own the stage. I love that. But be prepared to engage, get really, really valuable content for people, but deliver it in such a way that you're changing people's lives, yeah. which is just extraordinary. And I'm, I'm the same with you, Jerry. I've seen whole rooms, the whole attitude change in the room. And I went to an event the other day and the MC was reading the introductions to the speakers from a piece of paper. And I went, this is not going to end well. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so no, no, no. Um, the, I guess that's right, isn't it? It's the whole flow. And, and I guess as a speaker, you are taking people on a journey and you want that journey to be something that they walk away with and go, wow, that's, I, I've so enjoyed my time here. I'm glad that I came. I, you know, I've got so much value out of it. It's changed my life, whatever it is. You need something at the end of it that people say, wow. And the nicest thing I've found, Jerry, and this is um, probably a tip for me as a speaker, is when you do those sorts of events, there'll be people in the audience who will come up to you later and say, now, I'm running a conference in a few months' time. And I'm thinking, so that's where you pick up work as well, don't you? You yeah. always pick up work at events. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and that's, you know, that's the potential that's in the room. You know, there's some old school speakers who totally get that and a lot of speakers who don't. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to work that room afterwards. You know, like, I'm, oh, I'll quickly say it and then we'll move on to the positives. But said celebrity speaker doesn't even want to talk to the delegates. And you're going, are you kidding me? Yeah. Right, where other speakers, it's about hanging around. Like, even just yesterday, talking to a lovely speaker who's talking about the wonderful Max Walker, back in the day, rest in peace great man but he would he used to say he'd be the first one there and just about the last one to leave yeah now that's not always possible but it's the people you talk to and then even one of the things we would probably talk about here is that branding mm. is that what impact the people have have you had on them 
But yeah. then it's like, how nice were you to deal with afterwards too? Yeah. And that building a reputation is so like a friend seen you at X conference and they said you would be great for us. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they're the gems. You might have a hundred people in the room and there's 10 gems sitting there ready to tell somebody how good you were. Absolutely. That power of third party endorsement, just oh. the speakers. Yeah. It's like gold dust. It so. is gold dust. And, and you even asked him earlier about the change in landscape. Is there's a, People are booking direct a whole lot more. You know, they're not going through the agencies as much as they used to for, for definite. You know, I, I don't want to say what the figure is in case said bureaus come after me. <laughs> but it's been a massive shift to direct bookings. And that's because of this uh, word of mouth and reputation building. Right, and then, um, yeah, and the people, it's a lot easier to contact people than it used to be. Uh, so that big mystery, like when I started way back in the e olden days, <laughs> oh, 20 years ago, there was only X amount of people that had websites. Yes. Uh, when I, it's probably come full circle where it's, everybody's got a website. And there's, <laughs> as you said, there's a lot of noise out there. And yeah. how do you get above the noise? And it is about building a reputation. Yeah, brilliant. And those relationships, which are so, oh, yeah. yeah, brilliant. So uh, on that note, tell us how Book Speakers Direct is different. Because as you say, back in the old days, it was, you know, you had to have a certain amount of credential, either you're a sports person or a celebrity or something. And then maybe an agency would look at, at you as a broker, um, like an agent getting you out there onto stages and getting you big speaking gigs and things. What's changed and what is Book Speakers Direct? All right. Uh, so my time to plug my business. Go for it. Uh, Ta-da! Uh, it's, oh, okay, so... I've been doing this for a long time, as you say, so 2001. So there's about 15 years with two of the Australia's biggest bureaus and about four years running our own events company. Uh, in that time, I have been very fortunate to listen to a lot of speakers and a lot of speakers on change, leadership, and even as they want to call it now, disruption. Yeah. And then, and trust, like you were asking me before, like what is uh, one of the biggest topics uh, was trust. In the last couple of years, that has been trust and transparency. Because uh, mm -hmm. when you look at nearly every industry has had a Royal Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, and big brands have lost the loyalty of its people and they've let them die. And it's like, how do we get that brand loyalty back? How do we get people admiring us again? So anyway, so with the speaker side of it is like, I've probably been doing this most of my life with... Um, that going back to that briefing call, because I would say to a client, look, I think this lady is ideal for you, or this bloke would be the one you want. And oh, yeah, I'm not too sure. And I said, well, how about I set up a phone call for you? Oh, what, can I do that? And I said, absolutely. So I would set up a phone call. My bosses weren't overly happy. They'd be like, what if they go behind your back? And I go, well, why would they go behind my back? You know, it's all about trust. I've just put the two of them together. Oh, Jerry, that's not how you do it. And going, if they're going to be in front of their audience, they're going to talk to them anyway. Yeah. And so let's get them talking sooner. And every time, oh, he sounds ideal. She's the one we want. And it would be locked away. So <laughs> I've been doing that for this sort of 15 odd years. You're years. a rule breaker, really, aren't you, Jerry? <laughs> yeah, a bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> plus, plus, I just love connecting people. Yeah, and, um, yeah, and then the idea started of forming in my head of like, when I looked at sort of the companies that have done really well in disruption and change, they do the exact opposite. The exact opposite of what's already out there. Mm -hmm. Right, so we looked at ours, our business model, what could we do? Like, is commissions involved with bureaus and agencies? It's all about the commission. I mm -hmm. thought, well, well, let's take the commission out of it. Oh, um, let's say... Bureaus and I are charging clients to book a speaker. It's an admin fee, a $300 admin fee. Quite a few of them are doing, which is like double dipping. You know, so they're taking a commission from the speaker and they're charging the client. And then there's like preferred speakers. Each uh, bureau or agency will have their preferred speakers, which makes it very difficult for new speakers and emerging speakers to come through. Because if somebody phones up on leadership or mental health, they will have two to three people that they go to each time. Mm. You know, and because they know they tried and trusted and do that. So it goes, well, let's take the exclusive part out of it. Let's again do the opposite. 
and let the client choose. And then there's that whole shift from bureaus and agencies to direct bookings. And then going back to what you say is a lot of noise out there. Mm. So we're creating a central hub for make it easier to find the speakers. So Book Speakers Direct is all about this central hub for good speakers without any exclusions, with not charging the client and taking the commission out of it, just doing the opposite. So as a lovely person said the other day, we are the realestate.com.au, but for the speaking industry. You know, or else they said, somebody said we're Uber Eats. <laughs> Uber Eats for speakers. I love it. I love the fact that you really are a speaking connector. That's the whole point, isn't it? It's get, getting the two people together who most need to find each other, which yeah. is quite like the Tinder of speaking, really, that you've set up. I'm going to go yeah. take one step even further. Um, no, which is really cool. Hilariously, it is. It's like a dating site. You know, as they go, lovely friend of mine, lovely girlfriend that I cycle with, and she said she calls it shopping for men. So she, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I cracked up when she told me, you know, yeah, look at three, yeah, no. But, you know, you sort of take those principles of everybody's doing the things online. Um, and it is, it's like yeah. we ask the speakers to pay an advertising package with us, which is like from $5 a day, you know, $150 a month. And we make that tax deductible as well. So mm -hmm. we want it to be like a phone plan, but, you know, with the possibilities of getting work. So our role is to get speakers on board with us, real good speakers who have all that branding are ready to deliver, as we talked about, mm. and are ready to take a phone call because everybody else's bureau and agencies are designed so that they get the phone call. Our way of marketing is so that they call the speaker. Uh, so they give them as much information. Our web pages are like a mini website. You know, your show reels on there, videos, uh, testimonials, uh, what people will learn, and those direct emails to you and phone numbers. Uh, uh, again, it's probably Tinder. <laughs> Tinder <for speakers. laughs> Less swiping left and more clicking on them. Yeah, exactly. I I'll have, have to get a swipe thing happening, yeah. <laughs> so how's it going? Are you seeing some results from this? What are you seeing? Totally. It's early days. You only opened in 2019. Yeah. yeah. So like we joke about that, we're a startup, 19 years in the making and this month, a whopping six months old. Um, but we are off to a flying start. We have challenges because we are disrupting and we are changing the model. So everybody else has had 30 to 40 years head start on us. Um, I look at that like car sales and going, well, it didn't happen overnight, nor did real estate, um, .com or whatever. Um, but we are, we last, from June to no, early December, we had over 40,000 page views. Wow. So, I mean, we're on to something here. We are driving the traffic. And the beauty for us on, on this early stage, a lot of that's been organic. So it's 2020, and we are just going to push the digital marketing, market, market, marketing, and um, be involved with strategic events and conferences throughout the year, and just build awareness. Brilliant. And the more speakers we have on board, the bigger our marketing budget, and the more it's just snowballs and snowballs. But yeah, speakers are getting bookings. Um, I love them all to get as many bookings as possible. Uh, a good friend of mine said, oh, what if we get a road show? And I go, I will be chuffed for you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's show the book speakers, direct speakers. Yeah, what a great idea. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're off to a great start, and it's all about getting our word out there so that other people see what we're doing, um, like what we're doing. Some people think it's a no-brainer. Some people are sitting on their hands, which is mm. understandable. But yeah, the more people who get it, see what we're doing, and we're, we're growing very, yeah. and off to a wonderful start. Awesome. I love the disruption part of it. It's very, very cool. And the benefits for the people who are booking the speakers, for the corporates and the businesses and the event organizers, the fact that A, it's cheaper, they're not paying these commissions for nothing, but also, as you say, the most benefit that I can see is they get that connection with the speaker. It's complete, you know, you can create as, as large a relationship as you want. You can check their, their presentation. You can check that they're going to deliver. There's a bit more of a trust um, being built because you've got that relationship with them early on, which is really cool. And for speakers, you, you, I know it's happened with me before with a lot of agencies. They say, hey, can you pitch for this, this speaking gig? So you send through everything that you think they need and then crickets. You just don't hear a thing. 
Yeah. Um, you know, so this way, there's much more interaction between the speakers and the people booking the speaker, which is just awesome. It really is disrupting it, which is great, Jerry. Well done. Thank you. So, um, is it what else? Can, is there anything else you'd like to share before we finish up? I mean, we are at the end of the video. Of course, there's a there's a link there. You can yeah. click on that and go and have a look at Book Speakers Direct. Find out all about it. Um, as Jerry suggested, get yourself organised first. Make sure that you've got a landing page. If you haven't already done it as a speaker, go and buy yourname.com um, or .net or .org or whatever so that there's a place on the internet that people can go to find out all about you, have your speaker reel on there, your show reel or sizzle reel, which should, as Jerry said before, be an ad, be like a movie trailer. It doesn't need to be two minutes long, just a movie trailer is fine. Um, and then lots of examples of testimonials from people where you've, you've spoken before, some logos, maybe some of the media that you've appeared in, um, a downloadable speaker kit at a bare minimum, um, your bio and the topics that you speak on and the audiences that you um, speak for. So it really just makes it easy for the person who's looking for the speaker to go, wham, all in one place, I've got what I need, I can see that they've got experience, I can, I can listen to them or hear them on a podcast or whatever it is, and I've got a pretty good idea that they're going to be the right person for me. So make sure that is ready, get your brand right, and then get yourself onto Book Speakers Direct and start getting yourself out there. And if you're um, going and looking through the Weekly Rocket, get in there and speak on some of these podcasts and some of these free events that you don't get paid to speak because it gives you more experience, more testimonials, more credibility, and that trust factor that you can actually deliver when you're on stage. So, Jerry, any last suggestions for our, our audience on what they should be doing as speakers or anything else you'd like to share? Oh, I, how can I follow up after that? You've covered it perfectly. But it, it, it's be brilliant. You know, it's be bold, be audacious. That whole thing of owning the stage is really, if, if you think, be honest with yourselves. And if you think you're a six or a seven, think what have you got to do to be an eight, nine, ten. You know, that be really memorable so that people, as we're going back to, where those 10 gems in the room, is it so that they are out there and they're massive advocates for you. Uh, it's just keep lifting the bar and just own that stage and build a brilliant reputation and, and work with you, I'd say. And go for it. Absolutely. I love it. Well, look, thank you so much, Jerry, for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure to have a chat to you. Very excited about what you're doing and can't wait for um, for some of the people that we know to come back to us and say, hey, I've got some bookings. I've booked, been booked to speak. I'm so excited. Um, and anything else we can help you with at the Audacious Agency to become well-known, well-paid and wanted to be here to help you. So thanks, Jerry. Thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll see you again soon.